Hello everyone. Uh, the next few videos we're going to go over uh, our squareness checker, some of the modifications that we're going to make. Uh, some of the uh, longer time subscribers have seen this uh, featured in some of our videos and uh, if uh, if there's some uh, news, uh, ones that have watched and don't see it, go on ahead and uh, you'll see it in some of the other videos. Just look for some of them. But anyhow, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put this Noga arm and I can put it in any one of these number holes and I got this pivot point in the front and if you watch the videos where I'm checking the squareness of the gauges this is what I'm using to check that well one of the issues that you have is the Noga arm that I have has no fine adjustment and that's the way I prefer it uh, just about any fine adjustment that I've have used out there uh, does not repeat and uh, so what I'm going to try to do is build one of these adjustments uh, or uh, one of these squareness checkers using this Noga base without the adjuster and coming up with my own uh, fine adjustment. And uh, what I'm, I'm doing over there, I'm going to incorporate that design uh, within our new model of the squareness base. One of the problems that you have with the Noga bases or the Noga arms, uh, when you get to their fine adjust, this is the only one that I will actually like, and it's got more of a flexor point, spring loaded uh, flexor point there, uh, and that's about the only one I like. Uh, what will happen with most of the other fine adjustments you'll find on these Nogas, when you try to indicate something in, uh, because of the way they're built and the looser tolerances for everything to slip, uh, you lose your repeatability and you lose some of your resolution and so uh, with the other style uh, heads on a Noga arm like this I've uh, actually indicated things in on an ODID grinder and I would get it so the indicator would read zero and just for kicks I would set up a good solid setup as you see me use many times with uh, this Mitsutoya height gauge and I'd use the same indicator and I would go up and I would check what just zeroed out with my Noga base and I've had them out up to five ten thousandths of an inch already uh, depending on how worn they are uh, how sloppy and everything now I'm a big fan of Noga so I'm not really knocking them but I just know their limitations and so uh, when I go for accuracy I go for the non-adjustable arm because I want everything tight and I want it to repeat but yet I love the fact that you can have some adjustability so what I, I was looking and thinking about different designs that I can actually put in on uh, the base part here and this is just a concept it's not going to look like this I'm just testing a concept right now uh, for a few things one I got a quarter twenty screw here I wanted to see what kind of adjustment what kind of travel what kind of resolution uh, I would get uh, but basically I got a pivot point set up here with a dowel and I got a, a one inch green die spring in here so I got quite a bit of tension there uh, this is just machined it's co roll it's just a machine bottom it's relieved in the middle uh, but the reason I'm bringing that out because I want to show you how nice this actually worked but I have a lot of adjustment and I'm going to try to get this set so that you can uh, see the indicator can you see that good there Kathy mm -hmm. and uh, what I want I want to find something that uh, when I adjust this in I want to be able to stop that right on zero I want to be able to stop it real accurate I, I don't want to go a few tenths over a few under I want to be able to wind that right in and I, I wasn't sure that a quarter twenty uh, would would do the trick for me or not, but it does seem uh, to be good. Uh, the other thing that if you get a few little bumps, uh, you know things can move on you. So if I thump this, you know I'm thumping that pretty hard right there, and you can see it's staying at zero. It's moving a little bit. If I thump it back on this side. I can get it to go and what I may do is add a second one, uh, one inch green dice spring back there I'll still be playing around with that but uh, keep in mind though that even with a little bit of movement I may have uh, on there I have machine rather than ground uh, bottom on there and actually let me 
wiped that off because I know before when I was doing this that uh, it was rock solid. Yeah, but that's still pretty good right there. I mean, it's staying right at zero. And like I say, I'm thumping on it pretty good. The other thing you want is the repeatability. And again, without having ground bottoms, it's actually coming out really nice. And so anyways, what we're going to be doing in the uh, next few videos, we're going to be incorporating this concept into here and we'll probably be modifying it uh, you'll be seeing the build as I go and some uh, any of the struggles that I'll have with it or issues uh, you'll see the fixes and everything so what we're going to do from now right from now is I just want to take you over um, uh, to the CAD and I want to show you what I got drawn up on this right here what you see is the base uh, I got pretty much a lot of the same features, but now I'm adding a pivot point that goes through. I'm cutting a slot uh, so that uh, I can have this piece in the middle. I have that uh, knob uh, that you uh, with a neural uh, ring around it that you've seen for an adjuster, and uh, uh, so what will happen is is this piece right here will be able to pivot up and down. Uh, and uh, again I'll have the adjustment with the screws and this is just kind of a rough drawing I'm just kind of putting things together right now I'm gonna have a different method of holding the Noga base on there so these are just quarter 20 tap toes so it's gonna to be slightly different on that uh, <clears throat> if you come up and look at the bottom you're gonna see over here uh, I'll, I'll get a better shot of that in a minute but uh, there's I need a pivot point because as this goes up at an angle I, I want uh, this bottom surface right here I want it to always to stay parallel with that surface and so if I have my screws sticking straight up that I'm adjusting and I don't have a way for that to pivot uh, what's going to happen is, is uh, as that goes up at an angle uh, is going to be uh, catching uh, at this point over here and I'll be riding uneven on uh, yeah that ring right there and it's gonna affect adjustment so I want that uh, I want that screw to kind of stay perpendicular to this surface here so I have to have a pivot point and let me see if I can uh, kind of show you what I have on there and let me I have to turn a few things well there's there's a highlight of it right there but uh, let's see there we go. Yeah, we turn the body off, and, and here's what you got. And uh, so, what I need to do is I, I have to make a, a a ball like that. I'm gonna drill and tap into it a quarter twenty, and just use a long quarter twenty set screw. This is a quarter twenty tap on that end. And what will happen is. Uh, uh, that this ball will be riding on an angle. I'll just be counterboring at uh, uh, 45 puts me up too close to here. Uh, so if I had like a 90 degree 45 or you know 45 per side 90 degree, degrees total, uh, that might uh, not be as good as maybe if I go with a 60. Uh, and that's what I think I might try to do. So I, I'm I'm still going to be playing around with that part of the design. And the thing that's going to happen is you start screwing this down. Uh, I already got a method that we'll cover in a later video that will allow this uh, ball to pivot on that countersink. And at the same time, uh, I'll have something that will align it so that it won't just sit there and spin as I'm turning. It will lock in place uh, in the rotational direction so that uh, as I turn the knob up here, uh, I, I can get my adjustment. But anyways... Uh, the next few videos we're going to go over kind of a just a, a little device that I had to make uh, for turning uh, these balls over here. It was something I've been wanting to do for about a year. Never really had a need for it, but I thought this would be just kind of fun a little project to do just to uh, uh, you know see what its capabilities are. Uh, 
and now that I have an actual opportunity to use that I came out here one weekend for a few hours and we we made uh, a project and that's the next few videos are going to be on that and uh, we got the rough draft of this uh, little uh, radius turner that I can use on the mill we got it done and so now the video I'm filming right now is the introduction but it's actually filmed last so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the more completed version of this spin fixture and then I'll show you the build and some of the issues we had and uh, so it's going to be out of order a little bit but we're going to go over to the mill and uh, we'll get the three phase uh, generator turned on and we'll show you how that we're spinning these balls here and like I said this is a more developed uh, fixture right now for spinning radiuses than what I uh, will be showing you in the uh, next few videos uh, so we're out of order a little bit here Kathy will show you some steel pictures uh, uh, on, uh, when we first started we just had this it's uh, about a 5 8 plate uh, with no support in the back and it was kind of flimsy and everything so I added support in the back I added a much nicer pivot point uh, everything works good but anyhow this is uh, from uh, the upcoming video this is uh, the bowl that we were able to spin on here and I'll drill and tap quarter 20s in there and cut these off and I'll have my pivot point so here's the new model you just take a piece of your drill rod or whatever material you have uh, you can throw it in there and uh, I'm going to be modifying this and this is all coal roll uh, but I'll make it so I can have a pin in there that holds that right up at 90 degrees and then when you're located on the center line of your pivot point here all they have to do is put a half inch piece in there and loosen these up slide that right down and then when I pivot that radius I'm going to be really close uh, to whatever diameter the pin that I have in there in this case it's a half inch uh, and if you want to get even fussier in there the nice thing is you can zero out on that pin you can use your digital I got all the travel with my digital uh, I won't need to have uh, some kind of adjustment system on here although that I could put it on uh, I got everything I need with my digital right there to do some very high accurate uh, spherical balls there. So basically, uh, I'm going to, because I'm having a quarter 20 tap I'm putting in there, I don't have to make this a complete ball. So I can just uh, come down like this and just kind of eyeball the tip a little bit uh, close to the bottom. I got my digital set though so that I got to come out to zero. So I'll just move off a little bit and see where I start touching. We're taking light cuts. See if I can get some of that fuzz out of the way. <clears throat> there, we're about ten thousandths per side, about twenty off that diameter. Uh, what I can do is slow this down a little bit mark this up and if I develop this further uh, using a bigger plate putting some tap toes and uh, stuff in there I can set up stop so I can stop at uh, some very accurate uh, points you know if I didn't want half the radius or in this case I'm coming up all the way around making a, a partial ball uh, right now I'll uh, I'll just come up and uh, get that in.
And I left about uh, between two and three thousandths for this last cut. And there you have it. Just a real nice precision ball that's already turned. Like I say, I can leave it on the shaft, like uh, here, hold this up my V block, drill and tap it, quarter 20, and then I can just take it to the saw and cut it off. I only need to pivot on this first part here, and it'd be good. One of the nice things about this is that uh, whatever style lathe tools I have, I can build different blocks that can bolt onto this piece that can pivot. Uh, the other neat thing about this is uh, if I wanted to uh, and left a little stock, I could have go ahead and drilled and tapped that a quarter twenty, send that out for heat treat, and then I could put a CBN uh, or a ceramic insert, and then if I wanted to get just that real nice hard turn finish uh, that's real nice and smooth, I can do it that way too. So there's a lot of options, and uh, uh, I'll talk about some of the other uses that I have planned on this in a later video as well. So anyways, uh, that will be what the uh, probably next three or four videos will be uh, dealing with this and uh, other aspects of the squareness uh, gauge that the modifications we're making. And Kathy and I decided that we'll go ahead and do just a little video uh, with the steel pictures too. But this is the, the block that we made for solid rock and this thing ground up really nice and square. Uh, we didn't do a video on that because we have so many of them. All. Anyhow, but what I did is I just took one of the tap toes that was up there, drilled me a quarter twenty, counterboard it there. So now I can stick this in the, the vise. Uh, I, I, and now I got me a thick section. Uh, I don't get the vibration. You'll see in the uh, later videos when I was just using the plate, it would vibrate and it still worked nice. But over here, it, it felt so much better, cut so much better. Uh, and what I did is I made me a, a pin with a head on it uh, and that uh, from underneath the cap of this pin to here is about a thousandths bigger than that uh, thickness so that uh, this can pivot real nice and uh, like I say I'll be adding I'll be adding some uh, probably dowel pin stops so I can stop it at 90 degrees that way stop it at 90 degrees that way I'll be putting a series of a quarter inch tap screws all through there so that I can actually put stops at certain angles and what and and again uh, a lot of a lot of nice uses for that uh, this is out of Coro eventually I'll get a, a lot of refinements to it and then I'll, I'll make me a real nice one out of uh, some good tool steel and uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, <coughs> give a little shout out to uh, Stephen Lang it uh, was a Shark River machine. Yep. Yeah, Shark Shark River machine, and uh, he's actually uh, uh, building him uh, one of the squareness checkers there too. And it's uh, it just kind of happens that we're kind of working on uh, the same tool, different concepts, kind of at the same time. So if, if you haven't uh, seen his channel, we'll put a link to that in the description. And you can go, uh, go over there and you can see uh, the build that he's making. And um, uh, he's shooting to try to get a thousand subscribers and he's really close. So I'm sure he'd appreciate a few subscriptions there to get him over that point. And so be sure to check out his page.